Hi everybody, my name is Sarah and welcome back to Educating Adventures. Today for our lesson we're going to be learning about a very cool and very unique species of bird. Part of the reason this bird is so unique is because it has a very large horn-like structure on top of its head, kind of like a rhinoceros, which might have something to do with how our animal today got its name. Today we're learning all about the rhinoceros hornbill, let's get into it. Rhinoceros hornbills are one of about 55 different species of hornbills. We can find hornbills in Africa and in Asia, but rhinoceros hornbills are specifically found in the southeastern part of Asia and on a couple surrounding islands such as Borneo, Sumatra, and Java. We're typically finding rhinoceros hornbills in tropical forests, sometimes on the side of mountains. Rhinoceros hornbills are pretty much always found in old growth forests where the trees are gigantic and we're going to come back to why that is in just a little bit. Hornbills, which are a family of birds, get their name because many species in this family have a very large horn-like structure on top of their beak, which we call a cat. Not every species of hornbill has a cask, and on some species, it's quite small. Scientists hypothesize that a cask can be used for lots of different things, depending on what species of hornbill we're talking about. Rhinoceros hornbills get their name because they have one of the largest casks of any species of hornbill, and the inside of their cask is mostly hollow. It's got kind of a webbing of material throughout. Because it's mostly hollow, scientists hypothesize that the purpose of a rhinoceros hornbill's cask is to amplify their sound, which is another way of saying to make them louder. Rhinoceros hornbills, remember, live in a dense forest ecosystem. They communicate using a loud honking sound and being able to amplify that sound is going to help make sure that it's heard all throughout the forest. Scientists also hypothesize that their cask may have something to do with helping them attract a mate as well. Not only do rhinoceros hornbills have a very large cask on their beak, their beak itself is also very large and colorful. And because of that, many people get rhinoceros hornbills confused with toucans. But hornbills and toucans are not related and they live in completely different places. Toucans are found mostly in South America and Central America, while hornbills we said are found in Africa and Asia. However, it makes sense why people get them confused. They have a lot of the same physical characteristics, like that long beak. They have the same diet. They have the same habitat, the same nesting sites. One might say they occupy the same ecological niche, which means if they did live by each other, there would be a ton of competition and eventually one would outcompete the other. Since we did just mention a rhinoceros hornbill's diet, let's go back to that for a second. Rhinoceros hornbills are primarily frugivores, which means most of their diet is fruit. They use their long, colorful beak to pluck fruit from branches hanging around them. They will also use that beak to pluck small animals that might be around them, like lizards or insects, sometimes even eggs. But again, most of their diet is fruit. Because there are seeds inside of the fruit that they're eating, we consider rhinoceros hornbills to be very important seed dispersers. They spread seeds around the forest, in their poop, as they fly around after they eat. Both male and female rhinoceros hornbills have long colorful beaks and large colorful casks. The color of their beak and casks actually comes from an oil that they produce near their rump. We call it a preening oil. Many birds produce preening oil that they use to kind of rub over their feathers to help keep them clean and organized and waterproofed. Rhinoceros hornbills, their preening oil is kind of colorful, and when they dunk their beak in their cask in it, it slowly changes the color of their beak and cask to that bright, beautiful orange color that we're used to seeing. 
Because both male and female rhinoceros hornbills have colorful beaks and casts, we have to use something else to tell them apart. To tell a male and female apart, we actually look at their eyes. For male rhinoceros hornbills, their eyes are red, whereas for females, their eyes have kind of a whitish blue color. And that is definitely the easiest way to tell them apart. For most of the year, rhinoceros hornbills can be seen living in small family groups. But during the breeding season, pairs break off and they tend to separate themselves. Rhinoceros hornbills are monogamous, which means they only have one mate for the breeding season. But rhinoceros hornbills do take that a little bit further and they often come back to the same mate year after year, sometimes for their whole lives. They develop really strong bonds with their mate, which is really important and we're gonna get to that in just a second. And they show their bond to one another by sharing fruit and vocalizing together to really strengthen that bond. After breeding, when it comes time to lay her eggs, this is where things get really interesting. Rhinoceros hornbills have a very similar nesting strategy to many other species of hornbills. During this part of the lesson, in some of these videos, you'll be seeing a species called a great hornbill, which is very closely related to the rhinoceros hornbill and has a very similar nesting strategy. And the way that these birds are typically nesting is they need a tree cavity in a very tall old growth tree. A tree cavity is basically a hole in the side of the tree trunk, and those can sometimes be formed by birds like woodpeckers, but more commonly they're formed when a tree branch falls off the side of the tree trunk and rips open a big hole in the side. A lot of hornbills will use the same nest year after year if it's available because new nests can be really hard to find. Once they've got a nest picked out, they will slowly start to seal the entrance to the nest shut and as they do this, the female traps herself inside. She will stay in that nest for up to about two months. When they seal the nest shut, they leave a very small opening at the entrance where the male will pass food to the female and the chick once it hatches. Both the female and the chick are completely dependent on the male for food and therefore for survival while they're trapped inside the nest. It's a great nesting strategy because the female and the chick are safe from predators, but if something happens to the male hornbill while they're trapped inside of the nest, they can be in big trouble. Once the chick gets big enough, the chick will eventually kind of boot the female out of the nest and then they seal the entrance back up and both the male and female will help to feed the chick until the chick is big enough and strong enough to leave the nest and kind of start to learn to do things on their own. Now we did say we could have a big problem if something happens to the male during this very extreme nesting time, but one of the bigger problems that rhinoceros hornbills are facing is deforestation. Deforestation is the process of destroying or cutting down forests, typically to either make room for something for people or to get resources for something for people. Remember we said that rhinoceros hornbills need these really gigantic old growth trees? Those are typically the ones that we're losing during deforestation. And because those trees are disappearing, and those are their nesting sites, Rhinoceros hornbills can be in really big trouble if we continue to lose all of the places that they need for nesting. Luckily, there are some really awesome conservation projects in place, such as building artificial nest boxes for lots of different hornbill species to use. Scientists and conservationists have been working to construct these large barrels that they hoist all the way up into the treetops that kind of mimic the natural nest that a hornbill would use. We've started to see some success with these nests actually being used in the wild, but that doesn't mean that we give up on deforestation, right? We still need to tackle deforestation because that's the biggest problem. And we can help with deforestation in a lot of different ways, primarily by shopping local and trying to use products that have sustainable palm oil in them 
because a lot of forests are destroyed to grow this palm oil, which we find in things like soaps and lotions and chocolate and cookies and all sorts of stuff. And we can buy products that are made with sustainable paper, bonus points, if the paper is made from other recycled paper. So there are things that we can be doing every single day to protect rhinoceros, hornbills, and every forest animal. All right, you guys, if you would like to learn more about rhinoceros hornbills and that artificial nest box project that we were talking about, be sure to click that link below to visit our website where we've got more information and quizzes and videos and projects and some really amazing information for you guys. And I hope we see you next time at our next educating adventure.